Hey guys, remember The Flash, Season 3, Episode 11, Untouchable, and I was definitely looking forward to this episode, but again, like I've said, every episode this season, I wasn't optimistic about it, I was looking forward to it because it's Flash, but wasn't too, um, you know, excited like I used to be for this show, um, and this episode was definitely better, was definitely, uh, I think not as good as last week's, but it definitely was better than the mid-season premiere. I overall did enjoy this episode. Was it a bit boring? Yeah, I heard many people say this episode was boring, and yes, I would definitely agree it was a little bit slower than other episodes we've had. Um, but the ending really did impress me. It definitely does seem like we're actually going into something interesting, and that actually does make me happy, but let's get into this episode because I definitely do want to talk about it, so I re actually really do love the way this episode started because it reminded us of classic fun Flash, and we see Flash and Kid Flash are repairing a race. Flash explains that Cisco set up sensors to train Kid Flash's speed. Kid Flash promises to make Flash eat his dust, and believe it or not, uh, this is actually my favorite part of the episode. Flash and Kid Flash's relationship, I think, is overall very interesting and kind of echoes that of... Uh, Harrison Wells, wheelchair-bound Harrison Wells and Barry. Not when we found out that Wells was Eobard Thawne, back when we thought Harrison Wells was just that, Harrison Wells. It very much reminds me of their relationship, and they're doing a good job with that. And the speedsters begin, race through Central City, end up neck and neck, and... Flash phases through a wall to win when Kid Flash has to go over the building, and uh, we get this great scene where HR and Caitlyn and all and Cisco they're all bidding on who's actually going to win, which I thought was pretty funny to see. But Kid Flash complains that he can't phase, and Flash tells him that he has to learn how to do it if he's going to save Iris from Savitar, because as we know, he told Wally that he will be the one to save Iris, and you know Wally is very. Um, up to the task, you know, he obviously does want to save his sister if the time comes, and I, I definitely like seeing that, so later Barry meets Joe and Julian at Luigi's, and the chef Stuart Holtzman has apparently suffered from a flesh eating disease, and I like that they were actually somewhere that wasn't jitters, like it seems like we always see him at jitters, but they weren't there, so Barry says that they have a 3D scanner at Star Labs, and Julian agrees to do the autopsy there despite protocol, and outside Barry and Joe meet Iris at a cafe, and Joe suggests they get together with Cecile and her daughter Joni because he's clearly becoming very close to them and they agree and assure Joe that Joni will love him and once Joe leaves Iris takes Barry to Star Lab shows in the name of the restaurant it's the same of the restaurant in Barry's future vision, vi vision and she worries that everything is starting to come true and that aspect is definitely interesting you know the fact that that real that uh that reality is really setting into Iris and holy shit this could actually happen you know isn't that possible for us to actually try to change that, and Barry insists that things are changing, but Iris admits that she's scared when Barry suggests that they tell Joe, Iris refuses to ruin her father's, you know, future with Cecile, things are already going great for him, she doesn't want to ruin that, obviously, you know, it'd be terrible if they did that, he's on a high, they're not gonna try to lower it, and Barry agrees and promises that he's doing everything in his power to make sure that future never happens, even if it seems to be kind of inevitable. So Kaylin and Julian then examine the body, and Barry tells Wally that he's going to teach him how to phase, and as they leave, Julian tells Kaylin that the corpse doesn't require a bedside mirror. Remember how I said we didn't get enough Kaylin and Julian interaction in the last episode? Well, that's very much fixed here. I really did like their interaction. I'm just worried about where they're going with this, because... If they're going the direction, I think, I'm not really into it, and I'll talk about why, but Caitlin owns the body bag, they discover the decay has continued long after the body's dead, so definitely something weird is going on, and that night a band is leaving a club, one of the musicians, Julio Mendez, heads off, and a man named Clive Yorkin approaches him, congratulates Julio on his sets, and... He offers to shake his hand, and I'm not gonna lie, this scene was creepy. Like, I definitely was a little freaked out here, because when Julio does so, he feels something strange. Clive says it's all for the pain that Julio caused him, and Julio drops to his knees as rot spreads across his body. So clearly, whoever Clive Yorkin is, is basically able to infect anyone just from a touch of a hand, or just from the touch of anything, really, which I thought was very interesting to see. It's something The Flash hasn't really dealt with before, and I definitely do like their attempt at trying to do something different. It's just later where they take this episode, that's where my problems come in. So, in the lab training room, Kid Flash speeds out of the pipeline, he slams into the wall they set up, and Barry demonstrates how to do it, says that Kid Flash has to connect with his environment, and... He races at the wall again, 
bounces off of it and keeps trying. You know, he's doing whatever he can to try to, again, because Barry said the one thing he has to learn to do is to go over the building. That's something that he needs to learn how to do. And uh, basically, Cisco says that uh, Wells worked it out after 15 years, and Barry gets called to a new crime scene. So, and that's something I really did like here, is that I feel like the show has forgotten that Barry is not just, you know, uh, the Flash. He also is a scientist, and he works at you know, CCPD. That's something the show hasn't really touched upon a lot this year. That's something that I've just noticed in season three. Or even season two, they didn't really touch upon. I like seeing Joe and Barry, um, you know, deal with this case. And it wasn't just, you know, a metahuman. This was something much greater than that. They find Julio's body was found by a bicyclist. And Barry remembers that in Flashpoint, Julio was the CCPD captain instead of Singe, which that was very interesting to see. I don't know if we knew that before, but we know that now. And he looks at the photo of Stuart, remembers that he was a cop in Flashpoint as well, and Barry takes Julian the body to Star Lab so Julian can do an analysis before the body decomposes. And then he suggests that Joe cancels his plans with Cecile and Joni, and Joe figures that he'll be safe and refuses to reschedule despite the possible risk. You know, he really wants to do whatever he can to adhere to them. You know, he really wants to take care of them. He promised Cecile, and he finally feels like he has this woman. I like the way that he's not willing to go back. You know, Joe, a couple scenes ago, would have been like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll delay that, but he actually does want to make a life with her. He actually does want some sort of future with her, and I actually like seeing that with Joe. I like seeing that he is really doing whatever he can to stay committed to this woman. I definitely like seeing that. So at Star Labs, Caitlin and Julian examine Julio's body, race against the clock to find the origination point, and Julian finally says that he'd do it better alone. And just as Caitlin finds a point of contact on Julio's hand, Julian takes over. Caitlin points out he doesn't have to be a jerk all the time because, I mean, he's really not the nicest guy in the world, to say the least. You know, he's not really very nice or anything like that. And ignoring her, Julian finds a second string of DNA with an element that he's seen before on Alchemy's meta husks, and he figures that he created this meta killer, which I thought was definitely interesting to, you know, get this revelation that possibly he was the one that did it. But at Jitters, Joe gets coffee and tea for everyone. Joni says that she doesn't drink coffee because it causes, um, it causes, uh, can't, I, I don't remember what she said, but the others try to talk about Joni's college career. She says that she misses Kid Flash, and Wally asks what Joni likes about the hero, and Joni says that he's handsome and cool, but Cecile dismisses Kid Flash as a showboat, and she praises Flash, and yeah, I do definitely agree with Cecile that Kid Flash is a shell of what the Flash really is. I mean, Kid Flash, as we know, hasn't nearly had to work as hard enough, and that's because Wally is just, you know, ostensibly more powerful than Barry, and he can go a lot faster than Barry. That's why he hasn't had to work as hard, because he just is that much flat faster. And Iris says that Joe knows Kid Flash. Joni asks him which one is the real hero. And Caught in the Middle, Joe says that they both are. You know, he doesn't want to have to choose between his two sons. And Joni and Wally both dem demand that he choose. And Caitlin calls Barry, says that they matched the DNA from Julio's corpse with Clive. And as they send Barry Clive's photo, Clive comes into jitters, calls to Joe by name. Joe has no idea who he is. And Clive says that Joe and his croonies ruined his life. He touches the table. It rots away in seconds. And everyone runs. And... Joe's up on the balcony, Clive reaches for the supports, the bullets decay when they hit Clive, and Kid Flash speeds in, and when Clive points out that Kid Flash can't touch him, Barry motions with his arms, and Kid Flash then generate a whirlwind with his uh, spinning arms, and he knocks Clive through a door, and by the time the others get there, Clive has actually escaped, and Kid Flash speeds off, returns as Wally, as Joni says that Kid Flash is a hero, which that was a pretty cool scene, I'm not gonna lie, but... Laird Star Labs, Barry tells the others what happened, and Joe insists on going out to check on Cecile and Joni, obviously because, you know, he he basically uh, ditched them, and Iris objects, Joe says that they've been through worse, and his daughter finally says they might lose somebody soon, and tells Barry that her father needs to know, and the one thing that, you know, she didn't want to tell him, she unfortunately has to tell him, you know, she tells him straight out that Savitar is going to kill her in a few months, and uh, in the future, and Barry assures Joe that they'll change the future, and Joe is under understandably angry. I mean, he's not happy about this at all. He demands to know how long they've known, and Iris says that she told him to keep the secret, 
But Joe says it's not something that should be kept secret, and he tells Barry that he should know what Iris means to him and storms out, and I will definitely say, this was definitely one of Joe's best episodes in a long time, because I feel like Joe is a character, he hasn't really gotten that great of a story. I think they the show's never really known how to service Jesse O'Martin as good as an actor as he is. In season one, they definitely did. Season two, not really. I mean, the best thing I can remember they did with him was what they did with him in that Earth 2 episode. Um, but this was definitely one of the best storylines for him in a long time. You could see the love and devotion he has for Iris, but also the care he has for Walt. You know, he's kind of chose to choose between two sons, but he's also trying to make this life with Cecile, and I, I like seeing uh, this, you know, emotional side of Joe that we don't really get to see a ton on the show. I wish we'd see more of it, and it's one of those rare emotional moments that really does is hard hitting because, you know, Joe has just come in the realization that he could possibly lose his daughter when he just lost his wife, and as we know, in this, you know, universe, Iris did not tell Joe about that originally, so... Obviously, things are not great there, and uh, I did like seeing more of Joe's emotional side. that rare emotional side that we don't get to see a ton of, and I wish we did see more, because as we saw here, uh, Jesse O'Martin does an incredible job with it. So, Barry goes to CCPD to find a lead on Clive, and once they're alone, Julian tells Caitlin that they should have told Joe that he created Clive. He insists that he was responsible for his own actions, and... Caitlin wonders if he thinks she's doing that, and she leaves, so that night at the loft, Iris is working on a story, tries to call Joe, she leaves another message on his voicemail to call her back, and then goes back, and now we get to the part of the episode that I didn't really understand, you know, what they're trying to do here, but Clive comes in, Iris secretly texts Start Labs, while he says that he'll handle it, speeds off while Cisco tells Barry, and... Clive figures that the best way to make Joe suffer is to literally kill Iris. But here's the thing. You know he's not actually going to kill Iris. So this whole part of the storyline does not work, I have to say. And I don't really understand what he was, you know, what they were trying to do here. If they were trying to make us think, oh, Iris is going to die. But obviously we know Iris is not going to die. There's, there's no possible way. This entire half of the season is trying to spare her. So she swings a lamp at him, but Clive destroys it with his touch. Kid Flash arrives and speeds forward, but he's not fast enough to stop Clive from touching Iris's wrist. And he then tells Kid Flash to choose between him or Iris and walks out. So Kid Flash then takes Iris to start labs. The decay spreads through her body, and Barry arrives, tells Cisco he should call him in the future. Cisco suggests that they just freeze the decay and stop the spread of the decay altogether, and Iris tells Caitlin that she trusts her. Caitlin warns that she could lose control, but Joe asks her to try, so removing the dampener, Caitlin summons her cold powers and concentrates. Stopping the spread of decay, Wally says he's going where he can't screw up, and he walks out. Because obviously, he feels that, you know, he's just not strong enough, and that wherever he goes, tragedy seems to strike. And Barry finds Wally, and we get this good scene where he apologized for what he said. Wally says that he wasn't fast enough, and he genuinely feels like he let Barry down. Because as we know, he has to be the one to save Iris, and he's fully committed to doing that. And Barry tells him that he had a lot of people teaching him to use his powers. He figures that he hasn't been there for Wally because he hasn't inspired him to succeed on his own, you know, this has been a very, um, not, you know, hands-on kind of thing, Barry's basically done everything for him, he hasn't really let him venture out on his own, I think that's something that Barry's kind of regretting, and Barry promises that he'll do that from now on, so Wally agrees, and Cisco comes in, says that he and HR came up with a crazy way to track Clive down, and, in the vibe chamber, Cisco and HR explain that if they can find out who Clive is going after, they can find him. And they plan to vibe a flashpoint where Barry stayed. And Cisco hopes he can use his powers that way. And concentrating, Cisco touches Barry, finds himself in the alternate flashpoint of the CCPD. And I really do love seeing Cisco as vibe. I love that the show is fully utilizing that because it is definitely one of those interesting things they've done with Cisco as a character. And I really do love the direction that they're taking that in. He actually is vibe, and he's actually using his powers. It's just really cool to see. I have to say, and he sees Julio and Joe talking to Eunice, bring Clive in, the union charge Laura Stone thanks Jul Julio and Joe for the assist, and Laura takes Clive to Iron Heights, Cisco snaps out of the vibe and tells them what he saw, and they figure that Clive will go after Laura next. So Joe goes to meet Laura at the train station where she's working as a PI following a suspect, explains that Ameta is targeting her, he shows Laura a photo of one of the corpses, and Laura suggests that they get on the train before it departs. So Clive is then watching from nearby, Barry asks Julian if he's found a way to stop the decay, and Julian figures that Barry's blood 
won't stop the decay, but it will help them take down Clive. So an alarm goes off, they check on Iris, and the decay is spreading, uh, it, it's insurmountable at this point. I mean, the decay is crazy, and Caitlyn's starting to lose control, and Julian tells us she doesn't want to revert and insists that she's Caitlyn. And I really did like this conversation. You know, he says that he lost his battle for control, but Caitlyn is stronger than he is and won't let it happen. You know, he feels he's done for. He feels that he's already inherently evil and that there really isn't a way to fix him. But Caitlyn can turn around and Caitlyn regains control, use her powers on Iris, stabilizing her. And it's a good moment, but it's cut too short, in my opinion. We haven't seen enough with... Caitlyn's development in these two episodes that this really feels warranted. It feels like we just came back to it. The show remembered, oh yeah, we gotta do this Killer Frost stuff with Caitlyn. We actually have to do something with that. And now I just feel like they're not doing enough with it. I just feel like they need to be showing more of Caitlyn's Killer Frost. We just need more. Just a little bit more of her as Killer Frost because I've said it before, Daniel Panabaker slays as that character and we need to see more of her because that is when she's in her, that, that is her best on the show is when she's Killer Frost. But the train then heads out of Central City. Joe warns Laura that Clive is dangerous and Clive steps on the tracks ahead of the train, brings a bridge up ahead. Joe sees the debris, realizes what is happening. He signals Star Labs and Flash and Kid Flash speed there. Flash warns they don't have enough time to evacuate the train. He tells Kid Flash it will vibrate fast enough for the train to pass through the rubble, speeds onto it and vibrates. The train then vibrates as well, passes through the debris, and everyone applauds and Kid Flash in context and by radio says that Clive is back. Clive tells Kid Flash that he'll try again, and Flash tells Kid Flash to phase his blood into Clive and negate his powers, and Kid Flash says he's never done it before. Flash says he just did something he never has before but had to do it, and the younger hero cuts his hand, speeds forward, phasing through Clive, leaving the blood behind, and Clive then grabs him, but nothing seems to happen. Just, you know, he has no effect on him, so... Iris does recover when they treat her, not surprising at all, and Barry tells her that Clive is done. Wally says that they had it, that he had a great teacher, and you really do feel like Barry was able to teach him, and Julian explains that once Clive was stabilized, they were able to create a cure. Iris thanks Caitlin for what she did. Caitlin says that she had help as she glances at Julian, and Joe tells the others that they defeated Clive as a team. They have to be real with each other if they're going to stop Savitar, and everyone agrees, and Barry tells Joe that he won't let Iris die. You know, he can count on him. There's no way he will let this happen to Iris. Iris, and yeah, Barry can say that, but he can't really promise it. Like, he doesn't know that it's not going to happen. So, you know, Barry promising to Joe, just, you know, he doesn't know for sure. But Julian abruptly heads out. Kaylin goes after him. She tells him that he isn't weak, thanks him for his help. And then Kaylin says the rest of them would like to see the good guy inside Julian more often. Asks if he wants to get a drink. Immediately agrees they leave together. And I don't know if I want to see these two where they're going with them. I'm hoping that they're not going in the direction they are, but if they are, I just don't really feel this is the right way to go. We'll, we'll get to that, but the next day, Cecile and Joni visit Joe at the station before Joni leaves. Joe offers to tell Joni more about Kid Flash the next time she comes home, and assures Cecile that he's ready to commit to something in the future, so it really does seem like he means it. Like, he's gonna tell them everything. He's gonna tell them, look, Barry's a Flash, Wally's Kid Flash. He's just gonna tell them because he doesn't want to keep any secrets from them, and he doesn't want to make it awkward. You know, he doesn't want a scenario where he keeps running out and possibly ruins that relationship, so he just wants to get everything off the table, and I'm actually really looking forward to seeing if he does commit to that, and I like seeing Joe, you know, trying to stay committed and trying to do what he can to advocate for them. I really do like that. So, at the love, Barry replaced the door that Clive destroyed, says that he wants to make sure Iris feels safe about everything. Iris says that sometimes she doesn't feel like she doesn't get the Flash, but she assures Barry that she loves and trusts all of him, including Flash, and it's a really nice moment between these two. Then we get to the ending, and this ending is one of the best we've had in a very long time. I really did love this ending. Because at Star Labs, Wally is practicing phasing, managed to do it with the wall, and a branch opens behind him, and Jesse speeds in, we see. She tells him that Grodd has Harry in Gorilla City, and they need to rescue him, essentially setting up the Gorilla Grodd storyline we're going to get for the next two episodes, and that is the way this episode ends. Uh, really good stuff overall. Let's get in this episode, and more I think we're going to go from here. So overall, I actually really did enjoy this episode, I have to say. I think this was a nice change of pace um, from what we've been getting with the show. I think, you know, every, every episode's kind of been very rinse and repeat this season. Like, oh, we have this, you know, metahuman that's not really that memorable, but he might be here, he might be a threat. 
this one was legit a threat. I really did feel like Clive was a legit threat. I mean, this is someone who just by touching you, uh, you immediately get infected and you risk die. You basically just die of all your internal organs just stop working. I mean, it's a crazy scenario to think about. It's honestly quite chilling, honestly. It's quite a chilling concept, and I think the show did a good job with that. I'm surprised they haven't tackled something like that before, but I actually really did like the way the show tackled that. I thought it was definitely interesting to see the way that, interesting to see the way they did that. I definitely did enjoy it overall. Um, what impressed me the most, though, was the focus on Joe. I really did like where they went with Joe in this episode. The way that he really does want to, you know, provide for Barry and Wally, I thought was really great. But he also wants to make this life with Cecile and Joni. He definitely does want to commit to that relationship. And I really love seeing that. I like seeing Joe have a relationship, actually stick to it, you know, not try to struggle with it. He's actually trying to maintain it. And I do love seeing Joe try to do whatever he can to make this relationship work and, you know, make time for Cecile and Joni, even going as far as to possibly tell them who the identities of Flash and Kid Flash are. He will definitely do that, and I like seeing that he's willing to do that for them. I actually really do like seeing that with Joe. I thought that was definitely very well done. I thought all that stuff they did with him, as well as the connection with Clive, was really well done. I like that this villain wasn't after Barry. He was actually after Joe for what he did to him, um, you know, in prison, how he put him in prison, and now he's kind of getting his revenge on him. Was a different concept we really haven't seen before, and I definitely did like seeing that. And Barry training Wally as well. I like seeing the dynamic between these two, you know, seeing Barry and Wally train together, uh, Wally realizing that he actually does need Barry, and Barry realizing he kind of needs to take a step back and let Wally do his own thing. I like the way these two are really starting to understand what it means to be a team. You know, Barry's never really had a sidekick. You could say that, yes, yeah, Cisco's been a sidekick sometimes. You know, sometimes he had Jesse Quick, but he never really had an actual legit sidekick. And now he does in Wally, and I'm really looking forward to seeing where this goes. I, I, it's taken me a while to get used to Kid Flash. I will definitely say it. it's taken me a while to get used to him. I think I'm used to him now, guys. I, I like where they're going with Kid Flash right now, and right now, I, I really do like where they're going with Wally and Barry. Is the actor that great? No, I still don't think that Keenan, whatever his name is, is the best actor in the world. I think that his line delivery is very flat at times, but he's really selling me as Kid Flash, someone who genuinely wants to help Barry, someone who genuinely wants to save the world, and actually does want to make a difference, and I like the direction that that is headed. Um... My main problem with this episode, however, is everything else in this episode. Everything else is a problem, especially what's going on with the main plot here, with Iris. You know, as we know, I, you know, Joe now is now know what's going to, Iris could possibly die, and I think he definitely is going to be a little more on edge with that. The problem is, they tried to make you think that Iris is going to die in this episode, and we obviously know that Iris is not going to die, you know, so there's really no worry when Clive ends up, you know, doing what he does to her. You know there's no possible way the writers are going to kill her off. They're, they're not going to pull another CW show that I, you know, Jane the Virgin, they're not going to pull a Jane the Virgin. If you guys seen Jane the Virgin, you know what I'm talking about. They're not going to do that on Flash. The, the Flash is just not that kind of show. They don't just kill characters in the middle of the season. Sure, they killed, you know, um, they, they killed Henry in the penultimate episode, but they don't kill characters in the middle of the season. Not someone as major as Iris. So you know Iris is not going to die. They're building an entire half of the season to prevent her death. Why would they kill her? So that really didn't make sense to me. If they really wanted to challenge Joe, uh, have it be Cecile. Have it, I, honestly, I, I would have rather it be Cecile be the one to be held hostage. Something bad happened to Cecile. Have uh, Joe possibly have to save Cecile. I think that would have been interesting to see. I get obviously that we, you know, we don't know nearly enough about Cecile to care about her, but I just feel like they want to go in that direction with Joe. Either make it Cecile or make it Joe himself, or even make it Wally. I think that would have actually been more interesting if it was Wally. Even though Wally is the one that has to save Iris, this would make Barry have to do it on his own. I actually would have kind of wanted to see that, or have it be Barry and Wally have to say him. I just think Iris in general was just the obvious choice, and I really was not into that. And then Caitlin and Julian. I like the storyline. I did. I like seeing Caitlin tell Julian that he has a good in him, and that she 
can see that he is, you know, inherently a good person. He hasn't really done anything wrong. He's just kind of followed the, you know, he's gone down the wrong path. He followed a man with a very, well, not even a man, the, the you know, speedster. He followed Savitar, who commanded him to do all these evil things that he really obviously was not okay with. And it's really started to mess with his mind. I do think that that whole plot with them starting to understand each other, you know, with Julian telling her that she's good and him telling her that she's good. I like the way that they are understanding each other. Um, however, I'm not into the idea of them being a couple. And if that's where they're headed here, I'm really not into it at all. Uh, I like Tom Felton. I like Daniel Panabaker. I think they have good chemistry. But just like, uh, you know, j just like what they did with Caitlyn and Jay last year, I don't see these two as a couple. I just don't see that possibly happening. Uh, I get it, obviously, that they're trying to do that, but I just don't see that happening, especially when I'm hearing that, you know, uh, there's a possibility. Actually, it's not a possibility. We know that, you know, um, uh, what's his name is coming back. Her, her old hu her husband that died. Yeah, he's possibly coming back, and I, I think that's interesting if that's actually true. I, I don't know if it is, but uh, he possibly is, in fact, coming back. I can't remember his name. Ronnie, that's his name. Ronnie is possibly coming back. Um, yes, I, I think it's crazy, too, but Ronnie apparently is coming back. Robbie Amell has said that he's coming back for an episode, so I don't know if that's going to coincide with this, if that's going to be a different universe. I don't really know. Uh, we'll have to see what ends up happening there. Um, but the one thing that I did really like is the cliffhanger. I thought the cliffhanger here was actually really well done. And especially because we have to wait, you know, two weeks. That is how you make us wait. I think they did a very good job with that. I mentioned seeing what's going on with Gorilla Grodd. It's going to be a nice change of pace for a couple episodes. And that was something that was so great about the Earth 2 episodes last year. That was a nice change of pace. It gave us stuff that was going on in the season. But also gave us a look into a world that we don't get to see before. And I think the Gorilla Grodd episodes are going to be very similar to that and I actually like that the Flash does it when you have 23 episodes it's very hard to keep things fresh and exciting and that is definitely the way you do that but overall, guys, I definitely did enjoy this episode, even though I didn't really buy the main storyline. I thought half of it worked, half of it didn't. Some of it did feel a bit rinse and repeat, I definitely will say. But it definitely was better than some of the other ones will do. And I definitely do give it points for trying to do something different. And I am going to give The Flash Season 3, Episode 11, Untouchable, a 3.5 out of 5 or a B. But over, guys, I'm this episode of The Flash. I know you guys thought of this episode overall. The Flash, like I said, will not be on for two weeks. So uh, let me know what you guys thought of this episode, where you think Gorilla Grodd stuff is going to go. And that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you guys in my next video, which will be for tonight's episode of Legends tomorrow. And I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.